Here's the setup for the demonstration. This is a little jig to hold a ruler so I can precisely measure where the Geiger Miller tube is at. This is the pancake probe that I'll be using to detect the radiation, and this is hooked up to my level 14C. This is the source of radiation that we'll be using. This is a lead pig containing radium. Then I've installed a piece of lead here to exclude any alpha and beta particles, just to allow gamma to escape. That perfectly lines up with the zero. Next we can turn on the detector and set it to times 10. Making sure it's positioned exactly at 1. We can turn the audio on. At times 10, the radiation is too low to be detected, so we're changing it to times 1. Making sure it's on slow mode so we can get an accurate reading. Now that the radiation is flatlined and we can get an accurate reading, let's write that down. I think around 1400 counts per minute. Now, let's move the probe two inches away. And allow once again the Geiger counter to flat off. Now that it's done so, we can write down that measurement. And repeat. Moving it to three inches and waiting it for the flat line. Now repeating one last time by moving it to four inches. Now let's turn off the Geiger counter and take a look at our data. Now we see at one inch, it's 1400 counts per minute, but then it halves when you go to two inches to 700 counts per minute, then it halves again to 350 counts per minute, then it halves again at four inches to 200 counts per minute. This is because the inverse square law, where the quantity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. So let's take another example of this. Now let's repeat the same experiment, but this time let's use a spray can instead of particles that we cannot see. You can see when I depress the nozzle, it starts spraying the paint, and it forms a cone-like shape. This is the same thing that's happening with the particles. Now let's repeat the same test and using cardboard as our detecting medium. Here's the setup. At each interval, is one inches, and we'll be spraying at two inches. Every time we spray, we're gonna be increasing the distance by one. So we'll start off at two inches away, then move to four inches away, 
then move to six inches away from the source of the spray. During the first spray, we see that the circle is quite small, but if we move to the second spray test, we see the circle getting bigger and there's some overspray. Then by the third, there's a lot of overspray and the circle is less clear. This is the same thing that's happening when the radiation is coming from the source. It starts to spread out over time. Here we have a diagram portraying area in space. This is our source. Now let's take a ruler and draw some particles coming off that source. Now, in this one inch by one inch by one inch square here, we collect all three of the particles, but moving double the distance to two inches away, we need four times the, two times the area to collect all those particles. So the radiation is one fourth. Then adding another inch to that, we get a three by three. So it would take a three by three to collect the same amount of radiation as the one inch by one inch, dropping off the radiation drastically. Thanks for watching. And as always, if you have any questions, post them in the comments section below. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. But I've been told uranium ore's worth more than gold. I sold my cad, I bought me a Jeep, I got that bug, and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever.